Hey everyone, this video is for my class. So I am obviously out today and uh, I'll be back on Wednesday. What I'd like you guys to do right now is to use your time to either play around in Unity, work on a project that you kind of have in mind, or um, to work towards those performance tasks that you've been assigned. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to set up a location-based trigger in case you're still working on that and I'll also put a link in the description so make sure you check below the video to get a link um, so that you can learn how to change colors via script. So in the scene right here I've put a cube, a plane, I colored the cube with the material so I'm going to add one more uh, 3D object, I'll make it a sphere just for consistency. Let's make this 0, 0, 0 and then um, on that sphere, I'm going to raise the Y to 0.5 and I'm going to change the X value to 3. I'm also going to attach a different material to the sphere just so that everything has a different color and it's very clear. Now the sphere naturally has a sphere collider. I want to change that to a trigger. This is going to be my trigger. I'm going to tag it. Uh, I'll just tag it spheres because it looks like I already had that one on the cube um, anytime you do an on trigger interaction you have to add a rigid body component which is found in physics the rigid body naturally has gravity for this purpose I want to turn gravity off um, if you leave gravity on that's totally fine if you turn gravity off again that's totally fine it just depends on which method of motion you want to use so I'll add a new script I'm going to call this movement and then what I want to do is I want to get this script to move the cube alright it'll just be a moment any second now I want to move the cube by translating so first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a public vector 3 and this will be I'm going to use the proper capitalization motion translator and um, what I'll need to feed into this is a couple of floats so I'll feed in an x float and a z float and these will be determined based on whether or not I'm pressing the arrow keys. So in update, I want to put um, x float equals input dot get axis raw, and then I'll put horizontal with a capital H. That's important. For z float, it'll be input get axis raw vertical again with capital V make sure you spell vertical right I've had people spell vertical wrong and then they get kind of confused it's just like this right over here okay so now we've got X and Z values in the current frame uh, I don't think we'll need start so let's just ignore that the next thing to do is say motion translator oops equals new vector 3 and then we want to put x float 0 z float now that we have our vector 3 finally we can translate our game object game object now game object refers to this the object the script is attached to transform translate motion translator. This will work as long as our object is not rotating. Um, if your object is rotating then translate is not the best option. Okay, let's do a quick play test. Hit play. And then we'll use the arrow keys and verify that things are working out. Oh, whoa, that goes really, really fast. Okay, so let's slow it down a bit. Let's do times time dot dot time times let's make another float for speed now by default the speed will be zero 
So what I actually have to do is I have to go into Unity, click on my cube, and then I have to set a value for the speed. So I'm going to choose 5. 5 is a pretty good value to work with. That means in one whole second I'll be able to move 5 units. Okay, so this is kind of where we want to be. Now um, we want to code an interaction with the sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you noticed I got rid of the start function. Um, I'm going to create a public void on trigger enter function. And it will automatically fill in collider other for on trigger enter. What I want to do is I want to check if other dot transform dot compare tag and then I want that to be um, spheres just like the tag that I chose if it didn't have a tag then what you would do is you go add tag create a tag name it something go back to your object and then tag it whatever you want it to be so I've tagged it spheres so if the other object is spheres then I want to put code here. Now in Unity what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, if I run into the sphere, that would be like an enemy and I would restart my level. So I want to go File, Build Settings, and then Add Open Scenes. It will ask me to do some saving. I'll call this scene Scene 1. And now um, I'll go back to build settings. This is the index, so this is the scene I want to load, scene 0. So what I'm going to put up at the top is using Unity Engine Scene Management. And that will allow me to write the following line of code. Scene Manager load scene 0. So simple enough, if I run into the sphere and it's tagged spheres, then I'm going to reload the scene. Hit play, test it out, make sure things are working, and there you go. You'll notice there's a change in the lighting, but don't worry about that when you actually build the game. So if you went to file, build settings, or build and run, and you built the game, then that change in lighting would no longer occur. Alright, so don't forget, um, check in the description below so you can get a link to the color changing video so you can change color by script. And uh, make sure you guys play around with Unity and work on a project. I'll be back on Wednesday. See you guys next time. Uh, remember, like and subscribe.